Good morning, correct button. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in the, uh, this is the Banshee Cup playoffs, official playoffs, official playoff double elimination bracket. We've got best of fives. We're going into haunted mines for map number one. Uh, I am unprepared and I don't have my bracket ready. I, I don't know how to spell bracket apparently today. Uh, do 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 do. This is it's just circus music in my head today. Uh, all right, so we're in the playoff bracket. We're in the upper bracket semifinals. We've got abusive support harassment on the left hand side, and yes, Storm League enjoyers will be on the right. Double checking player names because sometimes. Players decide to be on different sides for some weird reason. Yes, we are on the correct sides. Uh, so we are in the playoff bracket. Uh, there are... Okay, so it looks like it's going to be three best of fives today, two best of fives, and a best of seven tomorrow. So we've got three best of fives today. So it's going to be relatively short stream day. And that by compare, like, in th well... I mean, that's four and a half hours at, at minimum. Anyways, we're going to Haunted Mines. The uh, the playoff bracket uses a tournament selected map, so uh, the players don't get to choose this. They're just mostly coin flipping for... I don't even think they're coin flipping for, for first pick. I think it's actually based off of uh, seeding. So if you want to check out the bracket, exclamation bracket. Uh, let's get through our housekeeping as we're getting into Haunted Mines. This is the Meta Madness style of draft. Heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps. Uh, there is the bounty system, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Let me see if I can find the link for that really, really quickly. Um, there is a bounty system, so if a hero is picked, played, and won with. So, for example, Butcher, Chogal, Nova, Asmodan, Gazlo, Murky, Probius, Valir, Kel'Thuzad. If you pick one of those heroes and win with it, you get 50 bucks to your prize pool. So, uh, if you take uh, fourth place, because there's only four teams available right now, since we're in the playoff bracket, and there's only four teams, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can... You could win... 50 bucks on top of getting fourth place prize pool. You can only do one of these uh, bounties per game, so you can only do Twin Blades Varian or uh, Monstrosity Abathur, so that's another one. There's All Alliance, All Horde, Overwatch, Starcraft, Diablo, Triple Healer, No Healer, and Juice Pirates. Uh, as a reminder, you cannot use skins, so they have to be... So, like, right now, this is All Horde, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, but you couldn't pick, like, Johanna with the Horde Orc skin, and that won't count. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? So, best of fives. If you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow. If you want to subscribe, it's much appreciated. Uh, next month, it starts the Twitch Partner Plus thing for 100 concurrent subs. So, be sure to subscribe here on Twitch uh, for three months straight. So, that way we can get that. It's a better uh, split payout for, for Bandit and I. So, that's the, big, that's the big reason on it. It's a better split payout. Bandit gets more money. And last but not least, if you're watching over on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube page. Uh, if you have multiple Google accounts, be sure to, to subscribe with multiple accounts because if we hit a thousand subs on that channel, we can monetize and make some extra scratch for Bandit. So, we're here. I know I have rambled through the beginning of the draft, but we got all of our housekeeping done. We can focus in on Twitch chat and talk about hot dogs for breakfast. Ketchup and noodles with sugar. Oh, no thank you. Hot dogs are technically just a mild sausage. Mm. Growing up a uh, microwave hot dog wrapped in soft tortilla shell with a piece of sliced cheese. I mean, I used to get, we used to, my mom used to buy the individual, like, plastic wrapped hot dogs. And you'd chuck one of those in the microwave. Like, I'd come home from, from school, chuck one of those in the microwave, put in a bun, skadoosh done. Uh, new Brack Murden will be banned away. We also have an Uther Rhaegar. Bans at the top of the screen, of course, don't add to that Meta Madness style of draft. It's only heroes that are picked and played. Uh, so this is not going to be any sort of bounty on the right-hand side, at least for the time being. They can still pick, like, a last-second butcher if they wanted. <clears throat> on the left, though, for the members of Avoiding Same Heroes, they've got three heroes picked. They could go for a Cho Gall to start it all out. Um, and unironically, they actually could. This actually would be a decent Shogal composition. The face shift from Brightwing. Genji's got that mobility to get in the back line and harass Anduin. Blaze CC is strong. But I doubt we're going to start that. We're going to be seeing uh, Greymane and Varian. Okay. Sorry, my brain was skimming everywhere because I saw Bish's name and I was like, Is Hanzo banned? You don't give Bish Hanzo. That is just a fact. If we can, if we get to see a Bish Hanzo, we, we are in for a treat today. Uh, last pick on the right-hand side for Storm League Enjoyers. What are they going to be leaning into? I just never... I just 
never thought of having a hot dog for breakfast. Granted, there's a lot of people out there that have, like, chicken sausages with their breakfast, and that's just not appealing to me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pork breakfast sausage guy. When you, when you get into, like, cherry apple sausages, it's just no thank you. That's, that's, that's a, that's, that's not my jam. Uh, we are already talking about food, and it's only 11 minutes in the stream. I am loving it. Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me. I am, oh, I do not want a, I do not want a five minute prediction on that. All right, chat. The wind will pick up around 10 a.m. my time. So I mean, it's gonna gradually pick up, but 10 a.m. is when the wind's supposed to really, really pick up. So hopefully, 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 we can get through all of our games today. Um, I have discovered the source of the uh, issue with the battery backup and the the other battery backup, and that it is dead. Um, it can't hold a load. <laughs> what I did yesterday was I did a little bit of uh, I did a little bit of science, and I was able to. Like, I charged up the battery backup without any load on it, like, n nothing plugged into it, and it, and then I unplugged it from the wall, and then, it, you know, it kicks on, and I was like, okay, it works, and then I put the router and modem on it, and it immediately dies, so I just, I, it just doesn't hold a load. So, I gotta figure out if I can replace those batteries or not, but let's focus in on the fun that we've got going on for all of you today. We have got our map number one, and we're gonna be trying something new today. We're gonna be uh, putting the music on for the game, so let me know uh, in Twitch or in the YouTube comments if you like it or not. On the left-hand side, we've got uh, Abusive Support Harassment, My Try playing that Varian. Right on the bright wing, Holpaka playing Greymane. We got a Bish uh, Genji and Mai on that Blaze. Top lane for the side of Storm League Enjoyers is going to be a Rai Hogger. We've got Diablo, Itrax, a Uther, an Uther, excuse me, an, an Arthas played by Aether. There we go. Aryan will be your Sylvanas and Love Call on the Anduin. All right. Well, I stumbled my way through the introduction. We'll go ahead and let you all know that the gamble's going to get going here in a second. So if you'd like to make a Twitch prediction, we can get that going here as the fight breaks out. Diablo with the Shadow Charge. Blaze comes in with a drip propulsion. Decent damage onto the Sylvanas is going to throw the Haunting Wave back and she'll be able to disengage. And Arthas is going to land a Howling Blast. The Soothing Mist is a second too early or half a second too early. Either way, the route connects. No kill to be had. And here comes your Twitch prediction. Thank you, Ash Mantle. 10 a.m. Mai Tai sounds good. What's in a Mai Tai? A 10 a.m. like strawberry daiquiri? I'd go for that. You know, a little bit of rum in there. I actually haven't I haven't I haven't tried to have rum in ages. I'm curious how how that would do with my stomach. We got a camp in the bottom to be grabbed, camp in the top on the opposing side, so even trades on those. Some quests at level one for Varian on the Lion's Maw, and then Howling Blast, as I mentioned, for the Arphas. Got 17, 18 or so stacks on the Diablo, Howling Blast landing onto the Genji, who continues to sustain some damage onto the enemies. No level fours yet, so no Shuriken Mastery to pick up extra stackage and damage on those Shurikens, as the top lane Siege is going to be pretty decent for the side of Abusive for Support Harassment. All right. Hey, we got odds. That's what I like to see. 13,000 to 420. Smoke weed every day. Uh, also, I'll do my best to catch it, but if there's people in chat, or if chat maybe starts moving a little quicker later on today, uh, if anyone asks, these are all best of fives. We are in all best of fives. So, I guess I could put that in the stream title, huh? Rum, orange, curacao, fresh lime juice, and ore grate? In almond syrup. I would try the heck out of that. Can you mail me one, Wildfire? <laughs> Please don't mail me food or drinks. <laughs> we got Arthas activating a uh, his frozen waste. He lands the Howling Blast into my tribe, but that's about it. It's possession for Sylvanas. The mines are going to open up. 
I always like to bring up this fun fact, uh, Haunted Mines is, there's, the, the mines are not on the Z axis, they're literally still on the X axis, if you were to look at the map in a two-dimensional shape. The first kill finally will happen. It's gonna be on Diablo. No souls to be spent to bring him back. Our Savannah, short distance hard. Oh, the Gimnane Cocktail doesn't get the kill. Uh, but the Howling Blast will connect, but there, there's no follow-up damage for this. All right, this is a little fun fact I wanna show you. See how I keep going down? <gasps> all of a sudden, we're in the mines. It's, it's all, it's, it's literally, there's just, there's just, there's a gap. And this teleport is just linked to this teleport. So, it's just, it's just kinda funny. Now, people always ask, what about Deathwing, or Illidan, or Falstead? Like, can they fly down there? I don't know the answer to that. And if someone wants to go into customs at 6.12 in the morning, West Coast time, and find out, it'd be appreciated. Just mail Baja all the loose Fritos with your little hearts. Said, Do not mail me loose Fritos. The last person that mailed me loose Fritos Oh, we haven't seen them since. <laughs> That's not true, actually. They, they come by the stream quite often. All right, well, sappers are gonna be worked on over here. Haunting Wave from Sylvanas allows her to disengage. Genji jumps in, smashed into the wall, chastised as well. Face shift from Brightwing is gonna be good, and the last little bit of mana allows Bish to back away. Also, also, no one ever should mail alcohol in the United States. That's illegal. <laughs> nice staggering blow creates enough space. Ah, the taunt will come through, but yeah, the spin. Hogwild allows Hogger to back out. He's fine. <laughs> should we turn the Fritos into Frito dust and mail that to him? Please don't. Rob Paris, how you doing today, bud? My Final Fantasy VII copy is essentially, we'll get it to you when we get it to you. That is essentially my UPS uh, <laughs> delivery status. My UPS delivery status is, we'll get it to you eventually. I, not, I'm, I'm joking. It's, it's, it is, it's basically like your package is delayed due to weather and we'll get it to you when the conditions are acceptable. It's it's better verbiage, but the way that I read it is, fuck you, Bahamut, we'll get it to you when we get it to you. <laughs> this, I always get burned when I order physical. I always get burned. Brightwing also will be burned here. She goes down. A Lofko will be traded. Healer for healer. Good spin from Hogger. Nice staggering blow. Creates some space. Mai on the... Blaze is unable to back away, and he does get taken down. Possession from Sylvanas allows her to steal more minions and buff out this wave. As the Varian finishes out his level 1, Hogger spins in, looking for some damage. Bops off the fort. Gets a hit on Greymane. There's a Howling Glass. Black Arrow's activated. Genji jumps in the back line. Sylvanas will be the one to go down, and... uh. A little flame fire stomp through the enemy, providing some stoles. Actually, just healing for Diablo. So he's full on souls. And Hogger actually goes down here. No one picked up these last skulls, so the grave golems won't spawn. Because game design. Uh oh, that's gonna be a DC. Oh, wait. Pause? Alright, there we go. I know it's dark out your time. Is it snowing? Yes, yes. Uh, I... So Bandit, when it's snowing like this, Bandit will not go outside. So I have to trick him, and if if I go outside and start shoveling the deck, but I, I can't shovel because of my spine. So I just sit there and I just take the shovel, I'm just pushing, I'm just pushing snow around the deck. Um, but if I go out there and I like do work, he's like, oh, you're out here with me. So then he'll like trudge around the backyard and he usually does most of his business. He wasn't out there very long this morning. I'm assuming he probably peed and that was about it. Um, hopefully we don't have any accidents in the house, but it, it does, it the, when it's weather like this and it's this snowy, he really doesn't like being out there. But as I said, if I go out there and I pretend to shovel, he'll usually do his business. Uh, but it is, it like when I went out there, it is snowing. Like the, I was out there for like maybe five minutes or so less and the back of my hoodie was was already like because I laid down the floor immediately just to rest my my back since I was standing and 
doing stuff with the shovel. I keep doing this motion, and I should stop. Uh, <laughs> but I was, I was, I was, mo I was, I was doing stuff with the, I was moving snow with the shovel, so I laid down on the floor to relax a little bit. Um, just trying to make sure that I don't re-injure myself. But yeah, I was out there for like five minutes, and when I laid down on the floor, I could feel the back of my jacket like wet from how much snow there was. Last night when I went and snowblowed, like it was, an, it was insane. Um, I'll try and like, I'll try and take a video, maybe, maybe like a walk out of the neighborhood so I don't dox myself, depending on how bad the snow is and maybe the plow comes by. But uh, if I have a chance and I can, I can like get a video of an area that's not really near me and I can show you guys like the snow and everything. Yeah. We're supposed to get like another, we're supposed to get another two feet today. Supposed to get another two feet, which is about 60 centimeter, right? Because 12 inches is 30 centimeter, right? 12, 24, 6, 30. Yes. So every 12 inches a foot is 30 centimeter, roughly. So yeah, 60 centimeter of snow today, supposedly. Allegedly. All right, welcome back into the game. We have got our map number one still underway. Had a little DC right there. The player has rejoined. And now that the final skulls in the mines have been picked up, the Grave Golems will be summoned here. Good morning, Crush. Good to see you. Happy Saturday to you. Tell Bandit he's perfect. Mr. Bandit, you are perfect. You may, you may hold your poops. You may hold your peas. You may be a nervous dog, but you are a good boy. Oh, I am not paying attention to the fight. I'm paying attention to my dog. Eye tracks will be chased here. That's going to be an extract from the Genji. Wailing arrow from Sylvanas is the answer. A flame stomp from Diablo may provide enough HP. He's going to go back in with a shadow charge. And that was a mistake. He didn't get the wall bang he was looking for. The lightning breath is activated. Holy hacking butts. I can't believe the trade actually happened. We've got Diablo Souls expended. He's back in one second. Bunker comes down from Blaze. Hogger gets a pretty good spin. There's going to be a Genji jumping into the back line, and he gets a reset off of the Arthas. He's looking for the Hogger, and Brightwing will get that last auto. Itrax is back into the mix, but unfortunately, there is just not enough people for a sustained team fight. We do have Blaze going to bottom lane. There is a Null Pack down here. Excuse me, Siege Giant Camp plus this Golem. And that will be bottom lane fort, top lane fort traded, I assume. The Grave Golem in top lane is pretty hefty still. And it's dealing 604 damage into structures. Yeah, the Siege Giants behind that should be enough to empower that destruction of the fort. We've got Diablo getting a little kiss from Varian. Curse Bullet from Greymane goes out. I think it connected onto one enemy there. Might have been the Genji. And boss in bottom lane is, or excuse me, the Grave Golem in bottom lane is cleared out. Grave Golem in top lane as well, and I would say it's fairly equal siege. A little bit more. Actually, no, we look at that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh my god, these siege giants are gonna get so much value! Sappers won't find any value. It should be cleared out in lane. Siege giants still, oh no, they got distracted. Oh, that's unfortunate. By the way, we do have the month of March schedule and everything figured out. Uh, March 8th and March 29th are the nights of our, are going to be our movie nights. And I do owe you guys a Mario Kart night. I will let you know when that's going to happen. It's probably going to happen, uh, probably on the 15th or the 22nd. One of those two days. My family will be here during that time, so I just got to figure out what day they're, they're cool with me streaming longer. Probably, probably the first Friday. Because the second Friday is the last night they're here. Because they leave on the Saturday the 23rd, so. Anyways, all that aside, charge variant level 10. Army of the Dead for the Arthas. We've got a Light Bomb, Wailing Arrows, Shockwave, Lightning Breath. Curse Bullet for the Grey Main, Bunker for Blaze, X-Strike, and Blink Heal. 13 talent here a level or so away as we get Grey Main rotating to top really quickly. Uh, it's a little far out, and he's actually going to back off. Listen, hero. Second objective phase of the game is up and available. As a note, like Alterac Pass, the objective does swap lanes. Leap of Faith forced by the Ar by Anduin. Arthas will be saved. Genji jumps in, 
Trying to take down the Arthas. X Strike from Genji. Oh, my apologies on that. Broke something. There was a Wailing Arrow and an X Strike from Genji, and it looks like we just have a couple heroics traded there. And actually, the fight does continue. Face shift from Brightwing. She joins back in. A, a, a Light Bomb from Anduin will be met by a bunker down from the Blaze. Diablo's the one to fall here. 60 souls, so he's not able to respawn. And the Siege Giant camp will be stolen away, and I do think this shall be a lot of those Risen Miners and Skulls going over to the side of uh, abusive support harassment. But as I take a look into bottom lane, it seems like Greymane and Brightwing want to push things up a little bit further. Blaze will go into the, uh, into the mines, and it looks like Hogger will be going down there as well. But Anduin is going to get taunted by his father. Genji goes in. Greymane lunges in. The sidewall needs to get taken down. Base ship from Brightwing. Arthas does have his Frozen Ways active, which are going to be able to dissuade the Greymane sustained damage in Worgen form. But these Siege Giants, they get some decent... This is actually... Oh, the Minion Wave saves! The Minion Wave saves. Augur and Bottom is able to get a spin out. He won't be picked off. He goes over to top lane. So the Grave Golem for the side of Abusive Support Harassment will be in the bottom lane. Darth, good morning, bud. What's up? How's your Saturday? What if your family played Mario Kart with us? Uh, they wouldn't want to. If, uh, if it was like Tetris 99, my dad would be so into it, but... Nah, my mom, my mom doesn't care much for video games. Like, she's not, like, against it. She just doesn't care for it. She'd rather, she'd rather play, like, dominoes or something. Dominoes are like a like a fun board game. Light bomb from the Anduin. That's a great lightning breath from Diablo. Cooking up my try, who is going to be falling here. Wailing arrow from Sylvanas was thrown into this team fight as well. The bunker is going to expire from Blaze. Curse bullet available for the Gray Mane if he needs it. Diablo gets a shadow charge onto Genji, who just jumped into the back line, moves his way towards the allied side. Face shift from Brightwing will bolster the HP of Blaze. And it's still 34 to 20 in these. Um. Risen Miner Skulls. There's actually a few free ones down over here uh, behind this wall. Can't really see it too well, but there you go. You're saying they want to spend time with their son? I love my parents. Oh, another DC. rearrange this ice pack really quickly so let's snooze ads you know what i love about twitch if i want to get ad revenue from them you have to select the ad revenue thingy like you have to go to the ad revenue section and, and select for this month i'll run one four minute ad every hour so I had I had a joke that Twitch will always keep raising that number regardless of your choice. And this month my options were five minute, six minute, or seven minute. I have no option for four minute anymore. I can't I can't run four minute ads. I wanted to I was like, cool, I'll just run four minutes of ads like I've been doing for a month. Oh there you go, you can see the wind starting to kick back up. I, uh, we'll see, we'll see how much of this I fight today. We'll see how much of this I fight. If I lose, if I lose power a few times, I, I don't know how much I, we'll, as I said, we'll see how much I fight this today. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. They obviously would, yeah, so. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, will do my best to manage that, but that's gonna be, that's, yeah. I, I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the day when it's like, you, the minimum you can run is six minutes now. It's like, dude, come on. Let me be the one who decides how many minutes of ads I want to run. Just offer me less money. Just do that. You want to run three minutes of ads? Okay, then then you get less money. That's it. I don't think they want to tell us the truth and that the the amount that there's no amount of streamers running ads will make the the facts that they're bleeding money. Yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, ready being requested. Ready being requested. We've got ads still snoozed for a good amount of time. Let's go ahead and get in back into it. All right. Uh, 
Um, there we go. Apparently I have to turn the music back on after a pause, but not after the first pause. Only after the second pause. Actually, on that note, hold on one second. Since we're testing this out, let's go ahead and... There we go. It's a little bit more... A little bit more... A little bit more, um... Music volume. Anyways, 16 Talenteers here for the left-hand side for abusive support harassment. They will have the banner of Dalaran, but also to note they've got the Juggernaut for varying level 16... Or level 13, which is going to allow them to have that 4%... Every four seconds, Light Bomb from Anduin, Lightning Breath from the Diablo is going to be met by a next strike. This could be a game-winning uh, push right here if they can get a few more kills. Actually, I say that and Diablo is going to be respawning, so never mind. My this should be they got to know that people don't want to sit through several minutes of ads. Maybe more non-intrusive ads. Yeah. I mean, there's the there's the the not there's the full screen ad thingy where if you're watching in full screen, an ad will just pop up on the left hand side, where it's like, would you like to buy some headphones? And it's just a clickable ad. There's no actual like audio to it. Twitch should do more of that. Banner ads and and as as Lard said, non intrusive ads. Like I understand if if you if you go to a stream, you watch a few minutes of ads the first time. But then you start getting the non-intrusive ads. That'd be great. I wish there was a way for me to push a button and be like, oh, it's the middle of a game. I could run a 30-second banner ad, and all it does is it. there's a banner ad. There's nothing that actually affects the gameplay. That'd be nice. That'd be really, really nice. But um, Twitch is focusing on forcing me to run five minutes of ads. Ariane is able to back away in the Sylvanas as the Siege through bottom lane will confirm the keep here. And as I had mentioned, this could be a game-winning push. They've already taken down the Arthas. They've already taken down this, uh, this Anduin. Face shift onto my try. Grave Golem below 50% is uh, working its way through the core shielding. Looking like a potential fast map number one as Varian goes in on the Sylvanas, gets the taunt onto her. My try low, does go down. Blaze comes in with the Jet Propulsion and lands it onto Diablo. Greymane with the damage necessary for the kill. And Aryan will be sliced and diced by the Worgen of Kolpaka. And this looks like with the Grave Golem on core and it at 0%, that will be a victory for the side of abusive support harassment. Advertisers pay more for the intrusive ones. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm talking. I'm talking in a in a in a beautiful, wonderful world. In a beautiful, wonderful world. Things are, you know, things go my way. We have the CEO Thunderdome. Alrighty. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, into the uh, Banshee Cup playoff semifinal best of five series. Abusive support harassment on the left hand side. We've got Storm League Enjoyers on the right. We're going to Gordon of Terror. This is map number two in a best of five series. As a reminder, we're here in the uh, uh, Meta Madness style of draft. Sorry, I kept wanting to say Banshee Cup style of draft. We're in the Meta Madness style of draft. Heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps. So the 10 heroes we saw in Haunted Mines for map number one will be unavailable for map number two as the ads have just finished out. That actually worked out pretty good ad block time wise. Uh, but we are still behind on ads. Man, Jesus Christ, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough this month trying to run this much ads. But either way, we have got a Lucio da Haka on the right hand side to be banned away for Garden of Terror. Uther and what? Uther and what? Hmm. I have wicked deja vu, god dang. Johanna will be banned away, alright. Well, well, they 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 did not let Bish get Hanzo, so we will not be able to we will not be able to see a fantastically played Hanzo by Bish. 
Uh, but it is, it, we still have a very talented player behind that Hanzo, or piling that Hanzo. Banshee Cup would be, would be def definition B, uh, the Banshee Cup would be, definition should be using the Banshee Cup style of drafting. Oh god, my brain. It's too early. It's too early, chat. There's no caffeine in my body. We're still drinking green tea. Because if I wake up and drink black tea, for some reason I get acid reflux and, and nausea. <laughs> Even though I've already eaten something. Falstead and Murden. Hey, we got an alliance. We have an alliance uh, being built over here on the left-hand side. Rhaegar will be grabbed with the Sonya as well. Chogal composition. Ow, my balls. I find myself recently unable to trust any tree or bush. They just seem shady. <laughs> Dart, thank you for the 69 bits. I appreciate that greatly. That was very good. I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you for the 69. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Uh, ban wise, Zeratul will be removed. Okay. So they don't. Hmm. I got. Well, Zeratul does. This is a really good map for roaming, invading camps. So maybe abusive support harassment is going to pick up heroes that are a little squishier that could solo camps. Maybe that's the direction for the Zeratul ban. I haven't had caffeine in over a week now trying to get control of my blood pressure. I actually feel more awake in the morning now, having but having trouble sleeping. Oh, that I I know what you're talking about, yeah. I know I yeah. I absolutely get you. I absolutely get you on that. It's it's super weird. It's super weird how how you are way more awake in the morning because you don't need that kick. But at night, it's so hard to fall asleep. It's like, why is it like this? They're going they're going for all alliance, aren't they? They're going for all alliance. This is they're going for the uh for the for the for the for the, for the bounty. Any, any, does anyone in chat is there any wow aficionados in chat that can confirm or deny on any of these things? Right? ETC, he's alliance, right? Or is he horde? Oh, my balls. I used to be terrible at playing piano. My teachers said my problem was because I would always play by ear. I've gotten much better since I started using my fingers. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one too, Darth. Thank you very much. That was, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very good. Is ETC Alliance? ETC is Horde. Oh, he is? He is? Okay. Torin is Horde. ETC is factionless in my opinion, but hor but but of horde race. Okay, thank you, chat. I see. I don't know these things. I don't know these things. Well, they had it. I maybe maybe they had the same thought as me, where they were like the person. One person was like, "No, ETC's alliance," and then someone like Googled it or like asked the admin, and they were like, "No, he's not." They're like, "All right, just grab Malfield. Fuck it." <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of how the mouthfeel pick feels to me. It feels it feels like they were building the alliance and then they 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 flubbed it on the ETC pick and now they're just like, uh, all right, well, okay, let's grab the mouthfeel. Anyways, let's get into it. Map number two. Uh, 25 seconds might be not enough for the for the button on this command. Or does it will it trigger it on the loading screen? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, I wonder if I can trigger it at the end of the draft. Sorry, there's um, I'm trying to do a stream deck thing today uh to automate the music in game because I want to try and add music into the cast. All right, let's see. Does it auto turn it on if I do the command in the loading screen? It does. All right. Well, that works out. All right. Cool. The battle begins On the left hand side, we've got abusive support harassment. We've got a Ren Sylvanas, Mai on ETC, Hopaka to play your Malfiel, Bish on the. Oh, that's a Falstead. And we've got a Murden to be played by My Tribe. Left, excuse me, right hand side, we're going to see Storm League and Joris. Tan, good morning. What's up, bud? The good to see you. Open. 
Rye on so uh, Sonia, not Sylvanas, on a Sonia. We have got Aryan playing Hanzo, Itrax May, Love Call on the Rhaegar, and Aether will be your Imperius. Oh wait, the Sentinel, the Sentinel, the Sentinel, the Sentinel, the Sentinel. It doesn't hit chat. That's the most important thing. The Sentinel, it did not hit. Do have Ranger level one, but no hit for said Sentinel. Uh, Muradin, Malthiel, chilling in the bushes for bottom lane. Falstead working on top. He's going to go auto attack build. Malthiel, by the way, on a pale horse. 150% mount speed, as it is an additional 20%, and base mount speed is 130. Muradin, Malthiel looking for Imperius. The Stormbolt does not connect. The Thunderclap does. And I believe that's all the harassment we'll see for that. Hanzo, simple geometry level one. We've got Sonya Warpaint. We don't see that too often. It's been a lot of slam builds or maybe tough as nails. So we'll see some sustainability with that build for her. Hanzo, Aryan looking for the value. But my apologies, value found in bottom lane onto the Imperius. He will be the one to go down. Start the prediction. Which team is going to win map number two, Garden of Terror? Thank you, Ash Man. As a reminder, if you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the channel. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the music. We have added music back in. It's it's very it's quiet in the background, but it's it's there. So curious to see just if this adds a layer to our games or not. Sentinel goes through. ETC tries to invade onto this camp. Sonya's rotating down. She's going to land a spear as he tries to power slide away. ETC, this might be some... Ooh, we might be getting some ribs for breakfast, chat. 4,200 on Storm League Enjoyers. No believers on the side of Abusive Support Harassment, who did have a pretty strong game number one on Garden of Terror. Excuse me, Haunted Minds. Malfield, bottom lane, getting harassed by Rhaegar and Imperius. He's got the Wiggles. He avoids the Celestial Charge, but he's dead. Wait, he's got the dip. No, that was a beautiful purge from Rhaegar. When used on allies, make them unstoppable for 0.5 seconds. When used on enemy heroes, slow them by 80%, decaying over two seconds. And that was that... That was that little sort of lightning strike over the top of Malfield's head, and that's why his movement was impeded so very quickly, so... Nice utilization of the purge right there. Love how they how they adjusted that in the Rhaegar rework e ages ago. I was gonna say years ago, but I don't think it's been years yet. Dar, thank you for the 69. We'll resend your alert outside a game. So based on the fact that all band members of the Elite Tar and Chieftains are from the Horde faction, I'd say he's Horde. Okie dokie. I appreciate it, chat. Oh, Falstead flies bottom lane. Decent damage onto Aether here. Auto attack build Falstead. He's able to drop this uh, Imperius down to 25 or so percent. A chain heal from Love Calls good. Does have that Earth Living enchantment for the extra heal over time. For targets below 50%, a good cleanse onto our May as Imp Imperius lands the Celestial Charge. Gets some great Molten Flame damage. Murden jumps in the back line, lands the Stormbolt. He's going to take a handful of damage, but it's Imperius still the one in trouble. As he's looking to get himself out of this, the Celestial Charge is not good enough. And Lunar Flare from Ren does not find a stun, but either way, it is 7 talent here, faster for the side of Abusive Support Harassment, and it's 2-2 two two and kills, Imperius dead for 5. ETC transcends regional policies and rocks for the free beings on Azeroth. Oops. It's like when Metallica played in uh, the USSR. <laughs> That's that's immediately honest. That's exactly what comes to my mind. <laughs> ETC did take Crowd Surfer level four. He's also got the synergy of Guitar Hero level one and Hammer On level level seven. And if you're wondering what that is, I do believe we've got a few moments to talk about this while the next seed is popping up. So the Guitar Hero, while Guitar Hero is active, ETC heals for sixty percent of its damage dealt by basic attacks. <laughs> Excuse me. Basic attacks increase the duration of Guitar Solo by 0.5 seconds. Now, what is the synergy? Well, while Guitar Hero is active, your basic attacks deal 35% more damage. So if you can keep the duration going, you deal more damage during the duration. Neat! Uh, speaking of damage and synergies, we've got Secret Weapon for the Falstead, which is nice. 
Nice and synergistic with the one and four, since you're gonna be dealing extra damage from the frequent flyer scaling, and then the hammer gains gives you 20% of the damage dealt. So if you throw the hammering out, you'll deal more damage, which means you'll heal for more health. It's 20% still, but it's 20% of a larger number. Look at that fancy math on Bahamut side of things, as we do have a May falling to Falstead. 10 talent here almost here. We didn't do this last game, because I was a little distracted. It is going to be our 10 talent here at the top of the screen, so let's cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage, healing, and experience looks like so far in map number two in this best of five. Actually, I'm gonna take a second here and put that in the stream title. And of course there's a kill. That's of course when there's a kill onto Malfiel in the mid lane. We do have Hanzo traded now as I was able to update our stream title and the gust from Falstead pushes back a few enemies. Oh, at this point, Darth, it's like reflexive. No matter who even does it. Like I'm sure 90% of our community knows that if they do an alert during a, a game that I'll, that I'll I'll resend it at the end, but it's just, it's such a force of habit at this point to just say that. All right, no invade onto the camp over here on the left-hand side. Malthy will finish this out. Falstead for the top lane. We've got ETC. Ah, oh, he's working on things over here in the, in the mid area. Or excuse me, in the top lane. Collect the seed. And don't fret looking at mid lane Murden rotation, but but watching ETC because I was watching this Murden. He's he's looking to jump up here, but Sonya catches it early. She's not going to get ganked, and she'll be able to back away and mount it. But this top lane is going to take some decent damage. They are going to trade the the seed for this, or are they? Yeah, they are. They're going to trade seed. May's going to get this and try and find some value in top and the fort front gate will take some damage. Imperius lands a celestial charge. We got those 10 talenteers on both sides. Malfiel's holding level 10 still. He's actually not sure what to take. Is it last rites or tormented souls? Avatar for Muradin, stage dive, Gus we already saw. That's a nice power slide with crowd surfer value through the wall. Starfall for the Tyrande, by the way. Muradin doesn't land the Storm Bolt, but Tyrande does land her follow-up Lunar Flare. Ancestor Healing, Avalanche, Wrath of Vengeance, so or the Sky Suplex, as we like to call it. We've got a Dragon's Arrow for Hanzo, and Sonya pops Wrath of Berserker, but it, er, well, she used it already. So Dragon's Arrow goes out from Hanzo, a Gust from Falset is the answer. We got a bit of a split fight. That's an Avalanche from May consuming too, so it's a one second stun. ETC stage dives in. Falstead's the first to go down, the Ancestor Healing connecting. Might have been a misclick onto the May, but it doesn't matter. There is going to be some healing reduction onto the enemies, and uh, this is this is falling apart here for abusive support harassment, but I say that in a very low Sonya. Can she spin to win out of this? Absolutely she can. Avatar activated by Muradin. Celestial Charge is the answer. Muradin, though, he's still he's still getting he's still bopping. Unfortunately, he gets bopped by a few arrows from Hanzo. And this brawl in the top lane area will be successful to the side of Storm League Enjoyers, but another seed will spawn. ETC checking the bush with a power slide. Sonic arrow from Hanzo as they go for this bruiser camp. One unit still left on this. And ETC, he's gonna discover this. He's gonna get a delay onto Hanzo's hearth. Sentinel from Tyrande, but ETC, that cow is cooked. Rawhide. I think that's I think that's that's it, right? Another seed will have to be sacrificed, but hey, it's not that big of a deal. The enemy team will not be getting the uh, excuse will not be summoning the objective. Bish does have that secret weapon, and the range on secret weapon is pretty far, as you can see. Well, there you go, you can see pretty far in that range. So he's gonna throw out one hammering. He's gonna get chunk tier. Ren's got a delay, or excuse me, a heal. Love call going for the channel. Can Burden thunderclap in time? Yes, he can. Anzo throws in a dragon's arrow. The celestial charge will not connect. ETC activates his stage dive to jump back into the fight. The last rites on to the Imperius will connect, and that is going to be a second stack for Malfiel. Falstad barrels in, but he's gonna be hit with an avalanche. He'll be delayed out. Good starfall from Tyrande in this fight. Beautiful power sled from ETC with the crowd surfer value. And they still want to chase in further. Garden Terror will be picked up by Falstead. Top lane did have a camp and a wave. The fort will not be saved, I do believe. Unless that last archer focuses on... Oh my god, the archer focuses on to the minion wave. And it's going to have 54 HP on that top lane fort. Tyrande immediately run into the top to grab her... Excuse me, to grab... Uh, the experience from the lane, sorry, my brain chunked there for a good chug there for a second. 
Sentinel pierces through. We have that harsh moonlight. Oh, the piercing actually comes from the ranger, but still, harsh moonlight for the reduced uh, movement and damage. We have Imperius in bottom lane. Last rites again. The oh, he tries to cleanse the last rites with a wrath of Angiris, but doesn't find a target. Beautifully done from Malfiel. Picks up his third stack. That's 15 seconds off his 70 second heroic. Sonya Spears in. Wrath Berserker active, but a gust from Falstad denies this engagement. ETC. He's got his uh, crowd surface, so he can just power slide through the wall if he really needs to disengage, but not going to be needed as the mid lane fort will take some damage. They're taking Bahamut to Isengard. Is there like a beat? Is there is there a lazy river with strawberry daiquiris? That just sounds so good. Just sounds so good in the morning. It's a nice daiquiri. It's a nice heap of sugar. ETC is gonna do. He's just gonna st set up in the bush over here while Falstag continues to stack up. He's got 22 stacks currently. Malfiel in bottom lane. Is he caught out? Stage dive from ETC. He's got a face melt. He's also got the level 13 encore for that cooldown reduction on the heroic. So he's actually already down to 55 seconds on a 75 second heroic. Meanwhile, in top lane, there's still this siege happening, so some decent value found. Sentinel gets thrown out. Dragon's arrow again from Hanzo. I feel like we actually saw one of these 70 seconds ago. Tyrande's the one to fall. There was a retreat ping earlier, and they just didn't leave fast enough. This will be Murden activating Avatar. Falstead, he doesn't have Gus for 35 seconds, and he's considering to help out, but he, yeah, he's just out of there. Malthea's got Siege in bottom, ETC gets the mid lane fort, so some trades being had here. Uh, it's one out of three seeds, so they can still sacrifice this. There's two dead on the side of abusive support harassment. Falstead barrel rolls in, the power slide does not connect onto Aryan, who's dropped down to 50%, gets the Ancestor healing. Now Sonya is able to take down Falstead, and this gank goes so south for the side. All right, you get one, chat. Finland. You haven't you haven't been super well behaved. No, I'm just kidding. You've been alright today, chat. You've been alright today, chat. So you get one. Alrighty, so mid lane fort will be taken down. Second out of three seeds to the side of Storm League Enjoyers. Tyrande gets one delay, actually. No second delay, though, onto Lav Call. All right, all right, okay. Man, that gank did not go well, Chad. That did not go very well for them. Falstead clears out bottom. Imperius and Hanzo will manage their own bottom lane. Another seed spawning, this time top right of the map. No 20 talent tier. Well, I mean, it's, it's a level and a quarter away, so it is kind of close, but you can't really give this on the side of abusive support harassment, and they will be fighting on even talent tiers. What's up, SD? Good to see you, bud. Dwarf toss in, Stormbolt not connecting. Muradin does have his uh, Dwarf launch level 16 for that range increase, but also the cooldown reduction if you're landing on the enemy hero, if you get the little Goomba hit. Tyrande Sentinel being thrown out, does have the Empower level 16. 19 to 19, just about in our levels. Falstad has a flank onto Hanzo here. Let's actually zoom out a bit so we can try and see everything properly. Falstad pushing up a little bit more of that mid lane wave. Top lane checking, it's, very, it's, just, the, it's just the mage. Malfiel, they dive in onto somebody. The Ancestor Healing will go through. That's a beautiful flank gust. ETC stage dives in. Aryan will be Goomba stomped by that. That's actually Malfiel gets the kill. Doesn't matter. Last rites will come through as well. That's a fourth stack for Malfiel. 20 seconds off his uh, off his heroic. It's a 50 second cooldown at this point for Malfiel's last rites. And they sidewall, they gate. They want this map. They want this series fast. 
Sonya gets the Garden Terror, but Itrax is dead. I thought there was a last right stack there, honestly. Maldeal pressuring Sonya. She actually is the one pressuring him. Falstad, short distance flight. He's got the level 20 epic mount, but he starts tanking some core shots. This is really awkward. They want to end. Sonya, she can... Oh, no, this is not... There's no way. I mean, it's eight seconds on Hanzo. Well, it's actually eight seconds on Hanzo. Hold on. He's got a few... Oh, last rights. Team kill. Stage dive from the ETC. I don't know if he was anticipating the people coming out of the core or what, but either way, that's going to be Hanzo immediately killed as well. Man, oh man, abusive support harassment. Nice Gus from Falstead right there. Denies the Celestial Charge. Lopko will go down. Imperius, the lone defender. Will they go for the kill onto him? No, they're going to just look to end this game, end this map, and go up in this best of five series. GG well played. Abusive support harassment on a tear. All right, there might be two audio, two music audios for this. Just give me a second. I'm just, I'm letting the thing finish out. All right, I want to change this delay to uh, uh, how long do I want to change this delay to? Like nothing, actually. Hold on, I'm just gonna change that. I'm just gonna delete that out. And same with this one. And I'm gonna do this. There we go. All right, stats. Stats and then ads. And of course our joke. Ow, my balls. I've been reading a lot about these new hats made of corduroy. Apparently they are making headlines. <laughs> swap us over I, uh, so my power outages here are very like they're just like they're little dips like the power outages i had yesterday were enough to reset the oven uh clock but not the microwave clock so the microwave clock never actually reset after five outages yesterday but my stove clock and the dishwasher reset yesterday so it's the the blips are very small and i just need something to to stay i just need something to deal with that blip i don't need i don't need inter, i don't need it for hours on end i just need it for like five to ten minutes but having the wattage above the minimum requirement is what will really protect you against the power surges and grid for sure uh less than two seconds out of just whatnot yeah okay so that's what I'll do is I, I will I will do my math and I and I think I'll just buy one of those honestly I don't I don't really want to replace the entire batteries inside that other UPS. Alrighty, thank you all for your help. I appreciate the uh, the conversation around I, battery backups and stuff. We're in here in map number three, Battlefield of Eternity on the left hand side. It's abusive support harassment in this best of five series who are looking to knock Storm League Enjoyers into the lower bracket semifinal, which will be tomorrow morning. Today we're doing all upper bracket. We've got three best of fives for all of you. We've got Vinland Raider versus Space Goofs up next, and then the winner of this versus the winner of that will be our third best of five of the day. Meta Madness style of draft. We also have those bounties as we mentioned before. You want at least 20% more. Uh, you take your volts multiplied by your amps to get the wattage you need. Thank you, Ninja. I should actually call my brother about this. My brother works in robotics. I should really actually just call my brother. Sorry, I'm writing down, uh, V times, uh, amps equals wattage needed. All right, thank you. I'll just write down that little thing and that'll help me out. And you want at least 20% more, okay. <sighs> the higher your wattage, the longer your system will stay on after the cut. Okay, we got math. We got math. I like this. All right. Maybe if there's downtime between games, I can look at the... I can just look at the back of the two... The, the router and the modem, and we can do the math together here. Cassius Stukov, Garrosh Vala. Okay, so it is double auto attack. You've got the blinds as well. 
good control with Garrosh. On the opposing side, you've got the Chen Tracer Tyrael. Uh, probably a Malfurion. Oh, no, Malfurion was banned away, so never mind. Malfurion is already removed. Uh, Anduin's already been played, so no Light Bomb with Tracer. But there still is... I don't know, if they want to go into, like, White Mane or something like that. Now we'll go Decker Kane and Zagara. The push power of the Brood Queen. Brood Queen, right? Brood Queen? I think that's it. Um, and what do we have for our last pick? Gonna need a solo laner into this Chen, I assume? Chen Zagara. I don't hate a Thrall. I actually really like the idea of a Thrall. Earthquake is good. Sundering is a good uh, answer as well into some of the team fighting stuff. You've also got a Samuro. Okie dokie. Alrighty. That's the grab. All right. Got our gamble written up for all of you. It is howling out there. Fingers crossed we, we have sustained power for the day. Like, I'll make this deal with you, universe. I'll make this deal with you, Ular. You let me stream and do three best of fives, and then you can shut the power off when I'm, d when I'm done. I, I am fine with power being lost for the rest of today. I'll read my book. I'll have some beers. I'll shovel some snow. Well, not really shovel. That's the deal I'll make with you. I, I will put this into the universe. Let us do the full stream, and then I'll take the power outage. And you can turn the power back on, like, tomorrow morning. <laughs> like, at, like, 5.30, right before stream. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get into this. We are here on Battlefield of Eternity, map at number three in our first best of five of the day. We've got Hopak on the left-hand side playing your Samuro, a Mai Garrosh, Bish to play the Vala, Renon a Stukov, and Mai Tri will be your Cassia. That right there is your map, uh, what's it called? Your map Easter egg. Left click on the sword when you play Storm Battlefield. But we've got Storm League Enjoyers here. We got Rai playing the Chen. We'll see a Aryan Tracer, Aetheron Zagara, Itrax to play your Imperius, and Lavka will be on the Deckard Kane. Thank you again, Darth, for the joke. Making deals with the devil now? Ular? No, Ular is the god of snow. U L L R. That is the god of snow you pray to. Is actually in the town of... Is it Breckenridge? I think it's Breckenridge. They have the Ular Festival. And I believe in, Bre in Breckenridge, they also do... It's the world record for the longest ski shot. I think it's Breckenridge. I might be mismistaken. I know it's a Colorado ski town. It's either Breckenridge or Steamboat. But I think Steamboat has, like, their Western-type festival, so... Anyways... I don't know if they still do it, but back in the day, Steamboat, they would do, they would shut down their main street, and they would have people pulled by horses, and they had, like, jumps and stuff down the street. So there'd be, like, someone getting pulled by a horse down a street, like how you get pulled by a boat for wakeboarding or, or skiing. I don't know if they do that anymore. That, that kind of seems a little dangerous. But anyways, let's get a gamble going. Got our gamble going. Thank you, Ash Mantle. As we get into sustained siege, sustained siege in the bottom lane. Oh, it's in Breckenridge? Nice, I nailed it. Breckenridge Brewery is like, oh my god, dude. Breckenridge Brewery is probably one of my favorite breweries. Oof. It's, a, it's, it's definitely in the top five. Like, Bells is, I would say, I would argue Bells is probably number one for me. But that's just me being a Michigander. I was able to fight Two Hearted and Oberon out here. Oh, God, I miss those beers. It's just good. Three stacks for Vala at level one. Three stacks for Cassia. Three stacks for Stukov. Two stacks for Garage. Unfortunate. We got 5.6 to 2k. Thank you very much, everybody. Four stacks for the Chen right now. As he throws down a little keg smash. Oh, 
All right. Bottom lane scuffle over the camp. No actual invade from the side of abusive support harassment. And for the first time in this series, abusive support harassment kind of looked like the underdogs in this matchup right now. Garrosh is popping indomitable. He's going to take a bomb to the face, and that is Pulse Bomb from Tracer's second kill to Storm League Enjoyers. As abusive support harassment hit the limits of their hero pool in this map number three? Or has this just been a really smart siege draft from Storm League Enjoyers and all Chen needs to do is not lose too, top too hard? Look at that ruby value. Look at all those little potions. Look at all those little delicious floor juices. Chat. I would like to I would like to I would like to do a little education here. A little little Professor Baja, if you will. Pulse bomb onto Hopaka, trying to chase onto Aryan. It's gonna be way of uh Illusion. Nope. Way of wind? Way of wind. So, little bit of math for all of you lovelies at home. A baseline potion at level six for Deckard Kane heals for 361 HP. One singular vial from Ruby. Three vials spawn. Heal for 316 HP. That is a less than 50 difference. Per vial. And this is, this is, I always like to bring this up because I feel like it's, it's, it's something people, like people see the size of the vial and they go, oh, it's little heals. No, no, no. It's like 90% of a regular heal. That's why Deckard Kane Ruby is so strong. Anyways, biotic armor for the Stukov. They changed the icon for some weird reason. Bells is one of your top. Yeah, dude. Oh, love Bells. When I graduated from university on my gra my graduation day, I um, I went to I had like a little party and I went to go buy a keg of beer for it and they happened to have a Bell's Oberon keg, and I was like, "Yep, I'm buying that." <laughs> and I'll never forget my old roommate and I, who had a we had a massive falling out. He was next to me at the graduation because we were the same department. And his last name was close to mine in letters. So he leaned over at one point and goes, dude, where'd you get that Oberon keg? <laughs> just, and I gave him, I just gave him a one word answer. I just went Wilson's. Cause that was, that was the liquor store. I, I, I hated that guy. Not a good human being. Unlike most of you in Twitch chat. Most of you, most of you. Thank you again, Darth, for another joke. I appreciate that. We got Tracer still harassing, a little busy B. That's actually a good pulse bomb onto Garrosh. He pops the Indomitable, and the Chen Flame Breath is able to cook up Garrosh. That Warlord taking a bit of a nap. Itrax is able to back away. Oh, wait, is he able to back away? Cassie has got the auto necessary. Deckard goes down. Two to five in kills, still favoring the side of Storm League Enjoyers, as they will get, I believe, this is first Immortal of the game? Yes. Yes, this is still first Immortal of the game. Vala, does she have the sustain chase? Nice lurking arm. Chen's got the brew. Chen's got the brew. He drinks up a little bit. Top lane, Big Bad Belleth will be sieging up against the side of abusive support harassment. You're not a human being. Oh, I apologize. You're a good wildfire. There you go. See, usually human beings, it's like, you know, it's it's an easy neutral term. No one's going to get upset when, they, when they're called... Well, I wouldn't say no one. <laughs> Most people are okay with being called a human being. <laughs> Lurking arm down from Stukov. It's like when you call someone buddy or pal. It just depends on the context of the situation. Zagara will be traded for some Murrow. We have got a Decker Kane going back to the retirement home. He may have forgotten his wallet, so he has to go back and then he'll come back to the grocery store and pay with a check. But it's step talent here. Oh, wait, good groundbreaker, but no step up. Chen will trade the bottom lane for it as the top does go down. Tracer going to hearth out completely over here. I missed the button there.
Alrighty, so that looks like it's a sticky bomb for Tracer. We've got Devouring Maw, Tyrael Holding. Is he gonna go Judgment? Possibly. Wandering Keg for Chen. Stay well and listen on the Decker Kane. It is a Bladestorm Samuro. Keep in mind, he also gets armor from that. It's a very low cooldown, around 25 seconds. Uh, do 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 do. Vala Rain of Vengeance. We've got a Ball Lightning. Massive shove on Stukov, and uh, Garrosh is holding, so we'll see if it's Warlord's Challenge or if he's going to be a helicopter. He is a Warlord's Challenge. Okay. Alright. Tomorrow... Okay, he just pushes up the wave in top. Second objective phase is here. Garrosh gets the Groundbreaker, Warlord's Challenge, toss combo onto the Tyrael, pops the Sanctification. Rain of Vengeance down from the Vala. Stay a while and listen from the Decker Cane will be coming out. And I don't think he's going to be pressuring any further. Oh, he does. He lands the Scroll of Ceiling. Chen Flying kicks in. There's a nice Wandering Keg. Ally toss onto Bish. We have the Wandering Keg. It doesn't get the displacement they're hoping for. A Blade Storm from Samuro is able to take down Zagara. She will devour Ma the wrong clone. You just got to kill the right clone, chat. That's all you got to do. You just got to... Just gotta Devouring Maw the right Samuro clone. Toss into Chen. He's going to try and fly and kick through Vala, but she is going to have enough damage with the help of Cassia to take down that Chen. Immortal will be moving into second phase while Samuro goes to top and clears things out. Lagunitas and Sierra Nevada. Ooh, Lagunitas is a good one. Sierra Nevada is good. Sierra Nevada is just like a nice tried and true pale ale. Like, it's just, it's like... It's like it, it's the same thing I say with like bells. Like they're consistent in what they do. So when you wanna, when you want that type of flavor, like you know you're gonna get it. And I know like most beers, you know, it's mass produced. It's always the same. But I don't know. Like Sierra Nevada has just got like it's got such a good unique flavor. Same thing with just like the Lagunitas IPA. Founders and Stone. I don't. I have not had a lot of Founders. I do love uh, Pliny the Elder from Russian River Brewing. Pliny the Elder is very, very good. It's a sneaky beer, though. It's one of those beers that you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. And then you're like, oh, it's I've had two of these, and, and I can't walk anymore. Big stay while on listen. Stalls out the fen from Cassia. Stay, uh, excuse me, Sanctification helping out right there. My tries getting a little bit low, and Tracer is able to trade. Zagara goes down. Tyr will get some death timer reduction. I do believe Garrosh is going to get picked off here. And this will be a two for two in totality, but the immortal in favor for the members of abusive support harassment. So you Nevada's a annual Oktoberfest. Yeah, I do like that one too, yeah. Cause they do like the they do like the Marzen style, right? It's not it's not even it's not even like an American Oktoberfest. Like they do a pretty traditional Oktoberfest. Yeah, that's, that's always one that I used uh, Their celebration is usually pretty good. There's a springtime beer that they have as well that I'm blanking on that I think I think they have. Bladestorm from Samuro is going to proxy the wave here. The Immortal is going to get some decent damage. Fen from Cassia. Nice virulent reaction from Ren right there. Detonating way to push on an enemy who is inside lurking arm roots them for 1.5 seconds. Virulent reaction beautifully done. Will be able to set the kill into Chen. The Immortal will be cleared out. Another virulent reaction, this time onto the Tyrael, but he is not in a threatened position. And Bladestorm, as I mentioned, 25 second cooldown. It's going to be activated once again in top lane, and this just quickly clears out the wave. This is going to be... I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this is like PvE Samuro. He has had some team fighting moments, but he has... His job is a lot of go into this lane, push R, and then, well... Once again, you know, make mirror images, push the lane, back off, so. He'll show up here and there for a team fight, but he's gonna constantly create some pressure for Zagara. Also, oh no, no, our creep's right there. He did deny the creep over here, but either way, Samuro pops the mirror images. Takes a bit of damage from Chen, but he's not gonna be threatened to death. Lagunitas has a skeleton and rose on a bottle as, as your favorite. There was, um, uh, was it Founders? What's the, what's the brewery with this, with, where the logo is like a skeleton dude? 
and they have him in like different outfits for like the different beers. It's like Voodoo Ra Ranger or something like that. Is one of their beers. Um, they they had like this experimental IPA that they did in a in a multi pack, and that was delicious. And I wish they actually produced that and, and made that into like a like a six or a twelve pack, but they never did. Oh, a little something's very good. A little something's great. Nine to eight in kills, sixteen to fourteen in our levels. There's a warlord challenge toss combo on to Tyrael. He's gonna get it with a ball lightning. Stukov with the lurking arm underneath, and sanctification from Tyrael will be activated just as he gets out. The devouring maw slows things down as that Stukov was caught inside. A big Ruby from Deckard Kane will provide some good healing as Tyrael jumps in, and now massive shove on to, uh, from Stukov. Pushes the Decker Kane away, but it's still a Stukov dead. We have a very low Garrosh on the left-hand side of our screen. And Tyr uh, excuse me, Tracer is uh, fighting into Holpaka, and Tracer could take down the Samuro. Chen will fall to the Vala, so it is a one-for-one -one trade thus far. I thought Garrosh was going to go down, but somehow he's still alive. I mean, trait and everything. I must find another way. Ugh. Oh, if you're, if you're talking, oh man, Mexican lagers as well, ooh. Oh, Mexican candy skull style, oh, oh, okay, sorry. You're, ta you're talking about the graphic, I, I just saw Mexican, I was like, oh dude, Mexican lagers are great. There's, there's one called El Sully that's delicious, there's, uh, there's one called Taco Truck. Back when I was an engineer and I had a lot more, uh, money to kind of throw around, I would go over to my buddy's house, like, once a week in the summer, and I'd walk with Bandit, and on the way there, I would go get, like, a random six-pack of something I've never tried, so. Now we just drink cheap beer, because it's cheap. <laughs> Tracer's able to threaten a bit of this garage here. He's down to 50%. Let's pull away our, our town. Actually, no, we haven't seen the 16s for a little bit. Tyrael hasn't chosen his level 16. Goodbye, Tracer. Nice combo from Garrosh. Vala gets the kills. Zagara's going to finish out her level 7. Does go into Corrosive Saliva level 16. On the right-hand side, Samuro trying to pressure over here. Cassie with the fend in. Big stay well and listen. Not that big, actually. Only connecting onto my try, who's immediately woken up. Virulent reaction, lurking arm combo. Garrosh is in that devouring maw, and he is low. Gets a heal at the last second. The ball lighting from Cassia. Oh, my God. Bladestorm from Samuro. They're trying to just provide enough damage onto Chen, and he will go down. Chen takes down Chen from the stagger damage, but also from Vala Burst ability. And all right, another immortal. Let's go bottom lane. Samuro already pushing that wave up. Our triumph brings order to this realm. In the States, I only drink apple ales. Smith and Forge is your favorite, somewhere between apple ale and an actual cider. Hmm. I always get worried about the sugar content in those. I feel like those are those are very high in sugar, and I am very sensitive to sugar in the sense of I crash so easily. I get hyper very easy, and I crash very easy. All right. Well, bottom siege does continue with the immortal, still having some shielding available. It's actually dropping quite rapidly. Pulse Bomb on a Mitri. Sticky Bomb value. That's a pretty decent stay -a on listen right there. Garrosh is going to be woken up first. He gets the Warlord Challenge combo toss in. Ball Lightning from Cassie. A little bit of volleyball played by the members of Storm League Enjoyers. Keep in mind, this is map number three in a best of five series. If they lose right here, this is going to be Storm League Enjoyers dropping down to the lower bracket. They will have an attempt to work their way back into the Grand Finals uh, tomorrow, but if they do lose this map here, that'll be the, the end of their run for the day. We do have three best of five today. We have another semifinal matchup, and then the winner of this versus the winner of that will be our upper bracket final, which will happen as our third best of five of the day. Samura's going to try and use the... Ooh, ha, ah, ah, ha. That was, that was really sketchy. Uh, the... Where, you're, where you spawn and where your clones are actually is dictated by where your cursor is on your screen. But Samura was able to... He had the, uh, the buttons to swap immediately, so that was, that was just, yeah... Uh, teleporter short distance in the, in the direction of the mouse cursor. So I don't know if it, maybe his mouse cursor was pushed we or in a weird spot. Or maybe that was some way of him trying to dip dive and dodge around. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Hopaka, we just gotta call you Baby Houdini at this point.
Little Houdini action happening right there. Able to escape. It's a level 20 fight to level 18. Stay well and listen. Ball Lightning. That's a huge Titanic combo. Ball Lightning is infinite, by the way. Cassia at 23 seconds of cooldown on that. Tyrael's going to get some death timer reduction off of two enemies. The top lane siege is pretty good, and Zagara does force down the top lane fort. But meanwhile, in bottom lane, Samara's doing Samara things. Smith and Forge. The next time I go to Bevmo, I'll have to look and see if they have, like, a singular bottle of that that I can buy. Like, if it's, like, a big bottle, it's whatever. Like, but just, like, one bottle of it, that'd be nice to try. Or maybe I'll talk to my neighbor. Um, I know... I know him and his wife will drink ciders here and there, so maybe... Maybe... Like, I'll split, like, a pack with them or something. Am I type 1 hypoglycemic? I don't know. I just, sugar, I just, I just, I get hyper very easy off of sugar. Like, I had a, I had two ciders one time, and I was, like, vibrating, like, how, how, like, hyper I was. Samuro's currently trying to end the game right now, while we have a ball lightning going out. Sanctification from Tyrael is not, it's actually a sanctification kind of baits Zagara into death. She was kind of on a direction out, but she doubles back to try and get inside the sanctification, which was closing the distance and allowed Cassie to get that last little bit of damage. Samuro takes down some shielding, but no actual core damage. Catapult is fixated onto this keep right now, and Samuro's still harassing at the core. Taking the long disengage. Chen finds Samuro, swaps to another clone. Tyrael chasing, Bladestorm, that 25 armor, Sakuchi. Tyrael chasing in, and he's out. Got Chris Angel here playing Samuro. In the last day, you found some local stars. I'll have to look around for that and try it out. Massive shove, pushes Chen back. They're just waiting for the Immortal here, okay. No level 20 on the right-hand side for Storm League Enjoyers. This is a uh, monumental defense to be made. Beautiful Virulent combo. That's gonna be Cassia jumping in. The rewind from Tracer. Ball Lightning is broken. 30 seconds on a cooldown as Bish is gonna get thrown in by Garrosh. Zagara falls. Tracer on like two HP. She dies to the surge of light from Cassia. Currently Cassia mopping up on the right-hand side. GG's already called from a couple of the players. Is picked up by the side of Cassia. Make it a... Garrosh gets that last hit, and the GGs are called. Abusive support harassment. Move on to our upper bracket final. Do I drink Shock Top? No, I don't like Shock Top. I tried it. I tried it a couple times. I don't, I don't like Shock Top. Not for me. That one's not for me. Wheats and Wits and Whites, those are all ruined for me because of that one night I had that horrible blue moon. I had a horrible blue moon at a billiards hall that was closing. And since then, all Belgians and Whites and Wits and all that, they're just, they're ruined for me. The, the, the flavor, it, it, it tastes like hot, boiled hot dogs. Boiled hot dog water is what it tastes like to me.